Hello, everyone. If you like what I'm doing here, please consider subscribing, liking, and commenting. It would really help the channel out quite a bit. Thank you very much. News Radio 78, WBBM, Chicago. The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... G. Marshall. You cannot fly like an eagle with the wings of a wren. Ordinarily, this proposition would be only of interest to wrens, and not to all wrens either. Just those tiny, puny birds who have an eagle's mentality. Well, fate plays her ironic little jokes on us all, doesn't she? Sometimes the smallest people can get the biggest ideas. The piranha, a fish that's half the size of your little finger, is more than a match for the whale, which could be twice the size of your house. Rudy, that, that gun. Yes, Ramona. What, what, what are you going to do with a gun? What does a person usually do with a gun? You, you can't kill me. Oh, yes, I can. No, Rudy, no, no, it won't work. But it has worked. I can kill you and get away with it. Didn't I do it before? Didn't I also kill you 25 years ago? Our mystery drama, How to Kill Rudy, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Paul Hecht. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser. I'll be back shortly with Act One. The standard engine is a V8. Standard tires, steel belted radials. There are front and rear stabilizer bars, special springs and shock valving, fast ratio power steering, and a rally steering wheel. What makes all this interesting is that it belongs to a full-size six-passenger Buick. The 1977 LeSabre Sport Coupe. You'll have to drive it to believe it. I guess I'm lucky. My family's always been healthy. Oh, a touch of constipation now and then. But we've got X-Lax for that. When you need a laxative, shouldn't your first choice be the one more families buy than any other? That's today's X-Lax. Families like the chocolate it tastes. You'll like the way X-Lax works gently overnight for relief in the morning. Next time, make gentle chocolate X-Lax your first choice for occasional use only as directed. We've always been healthy, and X-Lax is part of that. This Christmas, True Value Hardware Stores suggest you give a gift that will stand the test of time. Give their December bargain of the month, the Lancaster Colonial Pendulum Timepiece by Spartus, just $9.99. The Lancaster Colonial Pendulum Timepiece gives an impressive decorator touch to just about any room with its hand-finished grain wood tone cabinet and hinge front crystal door. The Lancaster Colonial Pendulum Timepiece doesn't try to get by on good looks alone. Its swinging electric pendulum movement is also accurate independent. And it's one gift they'll appreciate every minute. This Christmas, give a gift that will stand the test of time. The Lancaster Colonial Pendulum Timepiece by Sparks. It's just $9.99 as the December bargain of the month. While supplies last at participating True Value Hardware Stores. nutritionist will say, you are what you eat. There may be some validity to that, but isn't it also true that you are what you read? The ideas, the principles that govern your life, where did they come from? Did you just create them out of nothing? Or did you read about them somewhere? 
So many books do not end on the last page. They go on and on forever and ever. Ah, hello, Rudy. Good morning, Lieutenant Foster. Well, now, if you're going to call me Lieutenant Foster, I'll have to call you Mr. Slaymaker, huh? I thought we'd become friends by now. Joe and Rudy. I appreciate your efforts to to help me, but I... Oh, come on, Rudy. You'll feel better after you tell us. Why can't we just leave things the way they are? I killed them. I admit I killed them. I'm willing to pay for killing them. Meanwhile, there are plenty of other crimes you could be concerned with. Okay, Rudy. It's one of those mornings. I can see that. I'll drop by after lunch. Hey, uh... Anything I can bring you? Oh, yeah, yeah. There, there, there's a new book out by Mace Hacker. Sure. Yeah, he writes the best murder mysteries in the world. Uh, don't you read them? No. Tell you the truth, after a hard day's homicide, my taste runs to Stendhal and de Maupassant. Yeah, well, that's too bad. Mace Hacker is truly a giant of literature. This is the last book. It's been published posthumously. I'll pick up the book for you, Rudy. I could also bring you some of the critical essays of Anatole France. Uh, no, thank you. I prefer Mace Hacker. I saw that lieutenant. I saw that patronizing smile. <laughs> you are a literary snob. Just let me tell you something, Lieutenant. If you'd read Mace Hacker, you'd see, you'd know beyond all shadow of a doubt why I killed him. You'd realize what destiny is. <laughs> destiny. This is the story I'll never tell you or anyone else. My story, my very own story, as written by destiny in the form of Mace Hacker. Well, to begin with, life was pleasant. Some would have found it placid. But not I. I had Ramona, the loveliest woman in the world, for my wife. Oh, dear, I had no idea it was so late. Oh, no, it's all right. No, it's not all right. A wife should make her husband's <laughs> breakfast before he leaves for work. Oh, all I ever want is coffee. That's easy enough. No, you want more than coffee, and my job is... Uh, to... dear, dear, I'll miss my bus. Oh, Rudy, darling, you're so kind, so patient, so understanding. I can see you're sleepy. You just go back to bed, huh? Oh, darling, you're so good to me. I love you, Ramona. And I love you. <laughs> Where would I be without you? Ah, must have missed the bus. Jack Jessup glowers at me if I come in late. He glowers by that mean old thing. Yeah, although recently he's taken to coming in late himself. Is that so? Yeah. Some days he doesn't get in till 10.30, 11 o'clock. Something ought to be done about that. What? He's the boss, darling. And besides, the less I see of him, the more work I can get done. Oh, you're just too nice for your own good. Well, I can't finish my coffee. Have to run. That's how it was at home with my wonderful Ramona. Of course, at the office, things were... Well, I didn't have an easy time of it. Because Jack Jessup was not an easy man to work for. Rudy, why didn't we bid on this North Side project? How could you be so... I mean, the biggest job in town, we didn't even... Jack. I don't want to hear any excuses now. Jack, look, uh... The fact of the matter is you're losing your grip. If you read the morning paper, you... Oh, yes. What else are we missing out on? Did you look at the paper? Oh, for crying out loud, I'm sitting here talking business. You're shoving a newspaper at me. What do I care? Who murdered whom? The North Side Project is on the front page. Yes, yeah, sure. It's making history. What are we getting out of it? We're getting out of it with our lives. It's bankrupt. It's once it folded. All the contractors are stuck. Now, let me see that. Huh. <laughs> well, sure. What did anybody expect? You know that gang that's in there. They've been involved in one shady deal after another. Well, we'll see if their city hall connections keep them out of jail this time. What'd I tell you? The minute I heard who's in it, keep away from that North Side project. Isn't that what I always said? Yeah, that's what you always said. As I recall, you suggested preparing a bid, didn't you? Well, let this be a lesson. Look behind the corporation. And doesn't this prove it? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure it does. That's Jack Jessup, owner of Jessup and Company Electrical Contractors, a most difficult man to work for. But 
These days, a job is a job. Why do you put up with him, darling? Oh, I have a rather pacific temperament, as you know, Ramona. Oh, but still, darling. Besides, I understand him. <laughs> you see, he was an all-American football player at college. He was a hero, a celebrated man of importance. Afterward, well, there are what are known as triumphs of the flesh. Triumphs of the flesh? <laughs> what an odd phrase. Wherever did you get it? I read it somewhere. Oh, and I know where. Mace Hacker. Yeah, I know it's fashionable to make fun of Mace Hacker, but his insights... Yes, dear. <sighs> we were discussing... Triumphs of the flesh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, these were the triumphs Jack Jessup knew very well. He graduated, grew older, and then, well, the body no longer ruled supreme. He went into his father-in-law's business, an enterprise he simply cannot understand. You do all the work. Oh, yeah, he knows that, and resents it. He should be told in no uncertain terms. It doesn't matter, darling. Believe me, it doesn't matter. And it didn't. I was happy. I didn't mind my job. It was just an interlude. The important part of my life was the time I spent with Ramona and reading Mace Hacker. <laughs> Hacker is, without a doubt, the most prolific writer in the world. A new novel comes out almost every month, and each one is better than the last. Why, I asked myself, am I so enthralled by Mace Hacker? Look, I do have taste, and he deals in sex and violence. Well, so does Shakespeare, for that matter. But Mace Hacker, well, his language is so explicit. Nothing is left to your imagination. It was a mystery. Until one evening, I found the answer. I was rereading an old Mace Hacker, and suddenly... Uh, Ramona. What is it, Rudy? Uh, do you remember uh, reading about uh, the man who, who murdered those three women? Darling, why do you bring up such a gruesome subject? What was his name? Well, I'm sure I don't remember. Uh, his name was George, wasn't it? Yes, yes, it was George. Yeah, uh, and the three girls. Uh, one was uh, Felicia, the other was Prudence, uh, and the third was Charity. Very good. So you remember, too. <laughs> no, I don't remember. How could I remember? It was in the papers. Only last month. Yeah. This crime, this uh, triple murder, it came to light uh, last month, correct? Mm, yes. Yeah. This is an old Mace Hacker novel, published seven years ago. The murders are described here minutely. Well, a, a story of a man who murders... Three women? What's so special about that? It tells exactly how he murdered the women, why he murdered them, and their names. There must be an explanation. Ramona, darling, he predicted these murders some seven years ago. It's uncanny. I'll say it again. There must be an explanation. There was. And I found it. Everything Mace Hacker wrote happened years afterward, years after a particular book was published and forgotten. I checked through all my old Mace Hackers. I went back almost 20 years, and sure enough, all of them had come true. And all the murderers and all the victims had the exact same first names as they bore in the Mace Hacker story. It was, it was a fantastic discovery. Somehow, somehow, Mace Hacker could foretell the future. <laughs> My story, Lieutenant. Yeah, the story I'll never tell you or anyone else began on the day of the building contractor's annual golf tournament. I'm a rather indifferent golfer myself, poor, actually, but Jack insists that I play in the same foursome because he, being a scratch golfer, has an opportunity to feel superior. Keep your head down, Rudy. You're, you're bending that elbow. D don't sway. Ah. Uh, well, what do you expect? In the rough again. Listen, you were lucky you hit the ball at all. Well, fellas, we may as well help Rudy find his ball. Uh, 
do you see any signs of it, Mr. Slaymaker? No, I don't believe so, Mr. Tallow. <laughs> I think we'll ever find that ball. I'll put a new one in play. I'm just slowing up the game. Oh, I'm in no hurry, no hurry. It's such a lovely day, I'd rather sit under a tree like this one here <laughs> and just read. Yeah. Yeah, so would I. As a matter of fact, I wish I could sneak back to the locker room and get my favorite book. Oh, what's that? <laughs> the latest Mace Hacker mystery. Uh, t t triumphs of the Flesh. <laughs> hey, that's fantastic. Why, why, are you, you a Mace Hacker fan? Oh, oh, from way back. I've read all 140 Mace Hacker mysteries. A <laughs> hundred and forty and one. No, I think you're mistaken, Mr. Tallow. Oh, no, 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 I'm sure I'm quite right. Uh, if you read your jacket on the latest Mace Hacker book, it says the 140th greatest... Oh, I know it says that, but it happens to be wrong. You see, this particular publisher has brought out 140. Yeah, but that's his only publisher. No, 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 no. The very first Mace Hacker was called... Yeah, I know what it was called. Death is a Lonely Woman. I'm sorry, but that's not so. Uh, Mr. Tallow, I don't like to boast, but I can name all 140 of Mace Hacker's books. Oh, I'm sure you can, my boy. But there is one other book. His very first. It was with another publisher long since defunct. Huh. I, I've, I've never heard of him. Few people have. A fantastic book. Oh, yeah? What was it called? Well, the name of it is Rudy, Jack, and Ramona. All right. Here we have Mr. Rudy Slaymaker, a dedicated fan of mystery writer Mace Hacker. And why? Because Rudy is convinced that Hacker's stories are all prophecies of murders that will occur in the future. Hacker even names his fictional characters after the real-life ones, who will one day make his tale come true. You only have a few moments intermission until I return with Act Two. Someday, baby, I'll wrap you in furs. Yeah, Marty. Someday, baby, you'll be dripping in diamonds. Yeah, Marty. Someday, baby, I'll buy you that fancy electronic sewing machine. Yeah, Marty. Someday is here, because right now at the Singer Someone Special Sale, you can buy the Athena 2000 electronic sewing machine for $100 off regular price. Push a button, it sews 25 stitches, measures buttons, makes buttonholes to fit. I'll make a trousseau for our second honeymoon. Someday, baby, someday. Price is optional at participating dealers. Your car. There are a lot of ways it can waste gas and money. But a car can't do anything by itself. Because a car hasn't got a brain. You have. Use it. Drive smoothly, get tune-ups, consolidate trips, don't speed, drive less. In other words, drive with your head. You'll save gas, you'll save money. A public service message on behalf of this station and the Federal Energy Administration. This winter, Swiss Air would like you to stay at home, at a magnificent chalet home or apartment while you're skiing in the beautiful Alps. Instead of staying at a hotel, you can choose a European chalet with your own bedroom, living room, and kitchen. You can pick one with your own sun terrace or wood-burning fireplace. A private place in the Swiss, French, Austrian, or Italian Alps is the perfect vacation for a few couples, a group of friends, or just a skiing family. Some of the 2,600 different chalets and apartments have their own swimming pools. Some are so close to the slopes you can ski from your front door. And some are located in a charming town where the only vehicles are horse-drawn sleighs. By combining your accommodations with one of Swiss Air's bargain airfares, you can arrange a one-, two-, or three-week vacation that's out of this world, but well in your budget. To get you a free copy of our chalet holiday brochure, call your travel agent or Swiss Air at 800-221-4480 or visit their Chicago office at 104 South Michigan Avenue and stay at home in the Alps. Rudy Slaymaker is 40 years old. Quiet, shy even retiring, a man who sincerely believes in turning the other cheek. He is convinced that a soft answer turneth away wrath. Rudy Slaymaker, who, despite his rather threatening last name, is really a man of peace, has just received an intimation that he is about to be involved in a murder. 
What did you say the name of that book was, Mr. Tallow? Rudy, Jack, and Ramona. Uh, 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 that, that's impossible. Impossible? Why is it impossible? Oh, because... Because I... It was Mace Hacker's very first published work. A rather small-time publisher who went out of business shortly afterward. And then Mace Hacker caught on with the present firm where he's been ever since. Rudy Jack and Ramona. <laughs> what is the book about? I don't know. Do you know? I've never read it. I've only heard about it. However, I would assume one of them kills the other two, wouldn't you? Yeah. Uh, where could I get a copy? Oh, I don't think you can. The book's out of print and the publisher is out of business. Rudy, Jack, and Ramona. It's probably the only cast of characters that didn't come true. What do you mean? Well, you call yourself a Mace Hacker fan and you ask that, you know what I mean. After he writes the book somewhere... That story really comes true. Same names, everything. Well, I... Do you remember any murder cases involving three people named Rudy, Jack, and Ramona? Rudy, Jack, and Ramona. I'm Rudy. My boss is Jack. My wife is Ramona. I felt a cold chill down my spine. I didn't know what to do. One of us was a killer. But which one? I must find that book. I must. I haunted all the second-hand bookshops. I rode away to the companies that specialize in finding rare books. And then, one day, after considerable trouble and quite a bit of expense... Darling, there's a package for you. Oh, uh, what, what's in it? Well, I didn't open it. I, I think it's a book. Uh, a book. The return address reads, uh, uh, Book Finders Incorporated. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, let me see that. I grabbed the package, ran into my den, closed the door behind me, and tore away the wrapping paper. And there it was. The book. A book that was almost 25 years old. Rudy, Jack, and Ramona. A murder mystery by Mace Hacker. The very first Mace Hacker ever written. I sat down, turned to the first page, and began to read. Rudy was boiling water for his coffee when Ramona walked into the kitchen. Oh, dear, I had no idea it was so late. It's all right. No, it's not all right. A wife should make her husband's breakfast. All I ever want is coffee. No, you want more than coffee. And it's my job to... Uh, dearest, I'll miss my bus. My blood froze. I looked at the printed page. That was the dialogue. Those were the actual words that passed between Ramona and me on any given morning. And here, here, Mace Hacker had written it all down 25 years ago. Why, that would have been 12 years before Ramona and I were even married. I closed the book. I was afraid to go on. What would be on the next page? I didn't want to find out. I didn't want to know. But that was a resolve I could never keep. Never. And so I turned the page. The dialogue was still familiar. Mustn't miss the bus. Jack glowers at me if I come in late. He glowers? Why, that mean old thing. Although recently he's taken to coming in late himself. Oh, you're just too nice for your own good, <laughs> darling. Can't even finish my coffee. Have to run. <laughs> the page came to an end. What would I find on the next page? I took a deep breath and turned. Ramona watched him hurry down the street to the corner bus stop. He and the bus arrived simultaneously. He stepped on board and was gone. She smiled. Her hand strayed to the telephone. She lifted it and began... To dial. Hello? Hello, Jack, darling. He's gone. Yes. Yes, he just got on his bus. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Get here as fast as you can. You know I do, darling. I 
let the book fall to the floor. I couldn't believe my eyes. I could not accept what I had just seen in black and white. Ramona, my Ramona, it couldn't be true, it couldn't. I picked up the book again. I had to read that scene between the two of them, the scene I knew would have to begin on the next page. She knew it would take him no more than ten minutes to arrive at the apartment. She sat calmly, quietly, controlling her excitement. Finally, the doorbell rang. She raced across the room. Threw the door open. I wish we could go away, Ramona, darling. Mm, I want that more than anything in the whole world. Yes, I know. So do I, but... How would we live... Loretta's father would fire me in a minute. I know. And I'm content with what we can have, even if it's only a stolen hour. <laughs> you know, I didn't know you'd turn out to be like this. Like what? Soft, sweet understanding. Jack, what are we going to do? I should divorce Loretta and you should divorce Rudy. Rudy. Rudy should marry Loretta and I should marry you. Yes. Loretta and Rudy are made for each other. Two sticks in the mud who don't like to do anything, go anywhere. But that can't happen, darling. Yes, I know, I know. And you should be returning to the office. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Rudy talks about it sometimes. He says... He says he covers for you when your father-in-law happens to drop by. Your father-in-law gets very upset when you're not around. Yes, I'm aware of that. But I hate to go to that office. You know, something Rudy scares me. He scares you? <laughs> I give him a hard time. But it's only in self-defense. It's just he knows so much about the contracting business and I know so little. I, I couldn't care less. <sighs> Listen... Maybe we should get divorced, and you and I Rudy can go. Rudy would never give me a divorce. He doesn't believe in it. Besides, darling, you're absolutely unfit for any work at all. In six months, you'd hate yourself, and you'd hate me. Yes, I guess you're right. What we have now is... Isn't... Isn't enough. But it's better than nothing. Now, darling, you better get back to the office. Those were the next three pages of dialogue. I, is that the way things had been going when I was out of the house? I refused to believe it. I hid the book in my desk, and I went into the dining room. Ramona had just started serving our dinner. I made you those Brussels sprouts you like so much, darling. Oh, uh, oh, yeah. Is, is something wrong? What? Oh, huh. <laughs> What should be wrong? Well, I, I don't know, darling. It just seems to me that you're no, very... No, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm all right. You seem very upset, very nervous. I'm not aware of it. Did you have a hard day? No, no, harder than usual. Was Jack Jessup troublesome again? <laughs> Jack Jessup? Honestly, Rudy, you're, you're... Darling, you're not yourself tonight. What's bothering you? What was I going to tell her? Yes, I was determined to get to the bottom of this thing. So I decided that tomorrow morning after I got on the bus, I would just get off a few blocks away and come back and catch them. So that's exactly what I did. I boarded the bus, got off after it turned the corner, waited about half an hour, and I went back to the apartment. I opened the door very carefully, quietly. I could hear music on the radio. And suddenly... <gasps> oh, oh, Rudy! What are you doing home? What, what, what am I uh, doing oh, home? Goodness, I... you scared me. I heard the door open. I, I couldn't imagine who... Oh, I, uh, I, I forgot something. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I better get it. It's, uh, it's in the bedroom. Uh, oh. Yeah, in the bedroom. wasn't there. Nobody was in there or anywhere else either. So what did that mean? 
It meant Miss Hacker was wrong, that Jack Jessup wasn't coming here mornings after I left. But my relief was short-lived. That night, I finally got all my courage together and got out the book. This time, I was determined to read it through. If he was seeing her here at the house, I had to find out. But why hadn't I caught them at it? <laughs> I soon got the answer. According to the book, when Rudy left that morning, Ramona had a premonition. She couldn't explain it, but she was a woman who lived by the psyche, and so she refused to ignore it. She dialed Jack's number once again. Jack? Darling, yes, he just left, but don't come here. No, 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 please, don't come here. Yes, my darling, I want to see you more than anything in the world, but I have this feeling, this terrible feeling. No, no, meet me for lunch. Yes, the usual place. Yes, darling, at 12. She hung up the phone. She knew something was wrong, terribly wrong, something that could destroy all of them. But she couldn't put her finger on it. At 12 o'clock, she arrived at the little east side restaurant where they had spent so many happy hours. Darling, what's wrong? It's Rudy. What about Rudy? He knows, Jack. He knows? How much does he know? He knows about us. And he knows everything. Are you sure? I had this premonition. I, I can't account for it, but I, I can't disregard it either. I told you not to come. Well, a half hour after he left, he came back. He what? He came back to the apartment. Why? He said he'd forgotten something. Well, maybe he did. No, Jack. No, you know he didn't. He came back expecting to find us together. Huh. Well, what are we going to do? We'll have to stop seeing each other. Oh, no, we can't. Wait for a while. Not now. We can't. Loretta's going out to the coast to spend a few weeks with her aunt. I planned for us to use that time. No, darling. But Rudy suspects, and I'm... I can't let Rudy come between us. But Rudy exists. I'll kill him first. No. Don't say that. It wouldn't solve the problem. Loretta would be alive. You wouldn't be able to marry me. There's got to be some way to kill Rudy. Some safe, foolproof way. There probably is. But the problem is to find it. Just like that. Just as cold-blooded as that. There's got to be a way to kill Rudy. A safe, foolproof way. That's how Mace Hacker has them talking in his book. And here I am, reading all this in a 25-year-old detective novel as if it's all happening to some fictional character. But it's going to happen to me. I'm Rudy. And Ramona is Ramona, my wife. And Jack is Jack Jessup, my boss. Well, it looks as if our hero, if he is a hero, could very likely be in the soup. However, Rudy has an advantage. Rudy knows something that evidently Jack and Ramona are unaware of. Rudy has a copy of the script to this little scheme. Assuming, of course, that A, it's a scheme, and B, there's a script. I'll be back in just a few moments with Act Three. The 1977 Buick Regal. It comes with Buick's terrific V6 engine. It carries six people and lots of Buick comfort. It's lean. It's maneuverable in city traffic. It's the most luxurious mid-sized car Buick builds. Yeah, this new Regal is pretty much everything a car should be. Except for one thing. It isn't yours yet. But it can be. Just see your Buick dealer for a test drive. Soon. In my hand is a little capsule. It's contact. It contains enough cold medicine to help relieve cold symptoms caused by every known virus. Think about that the next time you're sick. Sneezing, dripping, all clogged up. Then let us help you with real medicine. Like contact. We're number one in the whole world. Give your cold to contact. Real medicine for real cold. Take only as direct. 
This is WBVM Chicago. Is your bank open when you're busy and closed when you're not? Northwest Federal Savings knows that a good place to save is ready for you when you're ready. And ready to offer savers the kind of services you can get with the Northwest card. A special feature available to savers who maintain a $500 balance. And here's what you get. Traveler's checks, gift checks, registered checks, all with no service charge. Need document Xeroxing or lamination? It's free with the Northwest card. There's a special quick check cashing ID card with your picture. Even special vacations for Northwest card members. Get a world of services you need often by getting a Northwest card. At any of five convenient Northwest Federal Savings Centers throughout Chicagoland's great Northwest Territory. Be part of a special group and be a special person at Northwest Federal. Anytime, because Northwest Federal Savings keeps the best hours yours. Our story thus far concerns Rudy Slaymaker, who is in a prison cell where a homicide detective is urging him to make a confession. Well, Rudy isn't paying very much attention. Rudy is reviewing the events in his mind. And as Rudy relives them, he is convinced no one would ever believe him. He may be right. It was out in the open. They realized I knew about their affair and that they would have to find an opportunity to kill me. And since all this had been carefully plotted out some 25 years ago by Mace Hacker... All I had to do was to continue reading about it in Hacker's book, Rudy, Jack, and Ramona. (laughs) You think that's easy? (laughs) Suppose someone handed you a book and said, here is the story of the rest of your life. Would you be anxious to read it? (laughs) I would have thrown the book away, but I had to read it because, because my life depended on it. So, from the book, I continue. Ramona Slaymaker led a double life with brilliance and flair. She was Jack Jessup's ardent lover, and she was also Rudy Slaymaker's wife. Then, one afternoon, the bell rang. She opened the door. Her eyes grew wide with fright. Jack! Ramona, darling. You shouldn't come here. I know. Rudy suspects. He could do something desperate. I just had to see you before I left. Where are you going? To the coast. Loretta... What about Loretta? She's dead. Oh, my. Yes, she was thrown from a horse at tavern this morning. Oh, oh, I am sorry. I had to see you. I'm on my way to the airport, but I had to stop here first. Ramona. Ramona, I can't pretend to be overcome by grief. I know, darling. For years, there's been nothing between Loretta and me. So now, I've got to tell you that we've got to start planning. Planning? Planning what? Oh, come on. You know very well what. We'll have to find a way to kill him. Yes. You see, that means you'll be a widow. I'm a widower. My father-in-law can have no objection to our marriage. He'll even think it's logical for us to get together, and you'll be an excellent mother to his grandchildren. What we're doing is wrong, Jack. It's murder. My darling, it's the only way we can find happiness. I looked up from the book. Finally, the plot was arranged to kill Rudy, to kill me. That was the way Mace Hacker had written it. It had worked out for Hacker because he could kill off Loretta, Jack's wife. But in real life, Jack's wife, Loretta, was still very much alive. And as long as she was alive, there was no point in there trying to kill me. And then one day, I was at the office. The telephone rang. It was Loretta's father. Uh, uh, yes, sir. I don't want to be the one to break this to Jack, but uh, I'm afraid I have very bad news. What is it, sir? It's, uh, it's Loretta. Loretta? Poor Jack. I know how much she meant to him. It's very bad. Tell him Loretta's dead. She was out riding and the horse stumbled. Dead. Jack's wife, dead. 
And that meant that the way was clear to kill me. That I would soon be dead. I read the rest of the book as quickly as I could. How clearly Mace Hacker wrote it down. He likes to go for walks at night near the river where it's deserted. I keep telling him how foolish it is. Well, right near the old bridge, there's a clump of birch trees. I'll be waiting there. When he comes by, I'll shoot him. Oh. I'll take his wallet, watch, and his ring so it'll look like burglary. Oh, Jack. Yes, what is it? Be, be careful, darling. Of course, my dear. Next time he goes out walking, call me. I knew what I had to do. I had to see Mace Hacker. I had to talk to Mace Hacker. <laughs> but I ran into trouble. Nobody seemed to know Mace Hacker. Nobody had an address. There, there had to be something, some line on Mace Hacker. At the publishers, they maintained a stony silence. But I knew how to break through that. Fifty bucks invested in the right people can bring you all sorts of useful information. And so, in a few days... I found myself in a modest apartment building, and a small, neat plate on the door read M. Hacker. I rang the bell, and an incredibly old lady answered the door. Yes? Uh, I am uh, looking for Mace Hacker. Go away. No, uh, please, it's, it's, it's a matter of life and death. <laughs> That means nothing to me. Please, you must let me see Mace Hacker. You, you, you can't turn me down. Oh, very well. Come in. Thank you. Oh, I, I can't tell you how grateful I am. Uh, uh, tell Mr. Hacker I, I, I won't take too much of his time. Mace Hacker has little enough to spare. Oh, I'll, I'll wait. Oh, what? For Mace Hacker. I am Mace Hacker. You? Yes. But, but, but you... I'm a woman. Does that mean anything? But I... Speak quickly. I have no time to waste. All right. All right, tell me, who is Mace Hacker? I am Mace Hacker. No, no, but who are you... I, I mean, do you have the gift of prophecy? I have a gift. I don't know what it is. You write stories about murder, and, and years later they come true. Ah, uh, do they? Oh, yes, even the people's names. Now, how do you account for it? Uh, how do you account for it? Look, I came here for answers, not questions. Uh, there are no answers. There are only questions. Twenty-five years ago, you wrote a book. A book called Rudy, Jack, and Ramona. Did I? It's about me. It's about me, my boss, and my wife. Is it? How did you know about us? How? I mean, even the words we speak to each other in private. How did you know? I'm very tired. I usually nap about this. I, How did you know? I've never been so tired, so sleepy. Tell me. Tell me first. Tell me. Goodbye, no. Rudy. No, no, don't go to sleep. Tell me what I must do. I've already told you. It's in the book. In... The book. Follow the book. Mace Hacker closed her eyes and never opened them again. I went home, read the rest of the book, and I found the little twenty-two caliber pistol I kept in a desk drawer made sure the clip was filled. I put the gun in my pocket. And I went into the living room where Ramona was sitting. Hello, darling. A uh, lovely night. I, I think I'll go for a walk. At this hour? Well, there's a bright moon. Uh, would you like to come? <laughs> no, dear. I, I, I have a slight cold. Ah. Well, I, I won't be long. Don't walk too far and... Please, dear, 
Do be careful. Yes. Yes, I would be very careful. I headed for the clump of trees near the bridge. I'd get there before he would. She couldn't call before I left the house, and that was just the head start I needed. I arrived at the bridge. I hid behind the trees, and I waited. I waited until I heard the sound of footsteps. I waited till he came into view, till he was almost upon me. And then... I fired. The little pistol barked like an angry dog in the night. He fell on his face in an ungainly sprawl. He was dead before he hit the ground. So much for Jack Jessup. And now, I must finish the story the way Mace Hacker had commanded me to finish. I walked home. Slowly. Very slowly, I opened the door. And when she saw my face, a look of terror came into her eyes. Rudy. Surprised to see me, Ramona. Surprised? Why should I be surprised? It wasn't supposed to work out this way, was it? I, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm sure you do. Rudy, what are you doing with that gun? What do people usually do with no. a gun, darling? No, Rudy, no. Have you gone crazy? Goodbye, darling. Why? Rudy, why? You had your friend Jack try to kill me. You told him I'd gone for a walk. But I saw him first. I killed him first. And now you... I don't know anything. Your affair with Jack is over. What? What affair? Oh, Rudy. You're killing me for nothing. Nothing. Don't lie. Nothing. Uh, why would I have an affair with... You should not have died with a lie on your lips. Uh, y- yes? Rudy, did you take home the figures on the Marine Project? Jack. Hello. Rudy. This is Jack, Jack Jessup. Rudy? Are you okay? You see, I killed her because I thought that she was... (laughs) But it was wrong. And that man who was there by the bridge... Guess it wasn't Jack. Which means she didn't tip him off. And I guess... I guess they weren't having an affair, but according to to Mace Hacker... Well, Rudy, you ready to make a statement? Lieutenant, you'd never believe me. Oh, you'll be surprised some of the stories I hear. (laughs) You never heard a story like this one. And neither did the jury. So they voted to put Mr. Rudy Slaymaker away for the rest of his life. A pity. He certainly thought it was self-defense. For all we know, maybe it was. You just stay there, and I shall return in a few moments. This Christmas, give someone just what he needs. Hi, Pat Summerall to suggest giving Texas Instruments electronic calculators from True Value Hardware Stores. The eight-digit battery-operated calculator is all most people need to balance checkbooks and keep budgets. It has the four functions needed to do simple bookkeeping plus a percent key. And the price is just what you need, too. It's only $8.99 at participating True Value hardware stores. The eight-digit slide rule calculator by Texas Instruments is just what most high school students need. It has TI's unique algebraic operating system, so sequences can be entered in the same order they are algebraically stated. Other functions include percent reciprocal, square root, trigonometric and logarithmic keys, the four standard functions, and memory key. It's just $23.88. So this Christmas, give Texas Instruments calculators from participating True Value hardware stores. True Value, more than just a name. It's their way of doing business. 
Gene Kelly. And I'm Henry Winkler. And the two of us will be co-hosting one of the biggest TV specials of the year on Thursday evening, December the 9th, 9 to 11 p.m. Eastern Time on the CBS Television Network. It's called America Salutes Richard Rogers, The Sound of His Music. Two hours of the best show music in the world, performed by stars like Diane Carroll, Victor Moan, Sammy Davis, Sandy Duncan, Lena Horne, and John Wayne. And many of your all-time favorite musical scenes from movies like South Pacific, Oklahoma, and Carousel. Oh, it's going to be incredible, Gene. Right you are, Henry. And I'm proud to be a part of this tribute to a real musical genius. You said it all. So remember, everyone, Richard Rogers, The Sound of His Music, Thursday night, December 9th, CBS TV. Check your local listings for time and channel. Two wonderful hours of family entertainment. Brought to you by Anheuser-Busch St. Louis. Brewers of Budweiser, the king of beers. Was Mace Hacker? We'll never know. And who was Rudy Slaymaker? We'll never know that either. Because Rudy has reached a point where he doesn't know himself. It could even be seriously doubted that the book Rudy, Jack, and Ramona ever existed. Don't worry about it. There are times late at night, in the dark of the moon, when you can believe that nothing exists. Well, we do. Seven times each week. Our cast included Paul Hecht, Patricia Elliott, Ian Martin, and Ralph Bell. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by True Value Hardware Stores and Contac, the 12-hour cold capsule. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.